What's up, everybody? Z Reaper here again, doing another League of Legends Let's Play. And today, I have something that is not a, not even a planned thing. It was a, a game where I went ahead and was going to go support Leona, had all my mastery set up for it, my rune set up for it. Get into the game and realize we don't have an AD carry. Uh, last guy on our team went Phil as Janna, and uh, no one realized that we didn't have an AD carry. So I'm going to go ahead and try to play bot lane as AD carry Leona, uh, kind of. Uh, really what it's going to be more like, it's going to be more like a tanky bruiser Leona. I'm going to try to rush myself a Trinity Force, and then uh, pretty much just build myself straight up tank after that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and still start off with the same things I usually do, even though I'm not going to support. I'm going to go ahead and grab that Runic Shield and myself some pots that are going to turn into biscuits. But uh, that way, I'll be a little bit tanky. I'll be able to uh, grab myself some extra gold, and I'll be able to give Jan a little bit of extra gold while in this lane. And uh, I have no intentions of winning the laning phase, um, especially seeing as how we're going, we're going to be going up against a Nidalee and an Ash in this bot lane. Um, I'm pretty much just going to try to grab CS when I can, try to stay safe, and don't feed this bot lane. Um, even if we lose tower, as long as we don't feed them, we have all the late game potential. I can always come back for the mid game. Once I have that Trinity's Force, I'll be able to jump on top of anybody and pretty much be able to melt them because I just have a lot of CC lock on my own. And uh, a lot of tankiness just purposely built in with Leona with her uh, her shield and things like that. Plus, having Jana in the lane isn't bad either. I'll also have her knock up, her heal, and I'll have her shield as well, which will also give me a little bit more AD. So, why don't we get ahead and go right back to this lane. And like I said, again, we're just going to play it really safe. We're just going to keep trying to farm it up. And uh, pretty much just let them push us to tower. Uh, but uh, Vi starts to make their way down here. So it looks like we might try to go into a gank. But uh, we kind of back off from it. But we, we're, we're, we're pretty sure we're going to go in it. We're just waiting for me to hit three. Once I hit three, we're going to jump in. But Janna kind of jumps the gun. She gets in there a little bit too early. Takes a lot of damage. So unfortunately, we weren't able to... Um, turn around and clean that up in fact we we started losing the engagement had to turn around and run and uh now we're on the retreat as you can see Janna is almost dead so yeah Janna got done a little bit there but had she not we probably would have been able to pick up the ash at, at the very least and uh would have been able to maybe push the lane back out as i went back i went ahead and grabbed myself a dorn's ring and a long sword and uh, i'm planning to take that long sword and i'm going to make it into a phage so that way i can give myself a little bit more tankiness while also being able to do some more damage and build towards that Trinity Force, which I talked about earlier. Now, uh, looking at their team comp, they have a lot of AP between the uh, Diana, the um, Akali, and uh, Nidalee. So it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to grab a little bit of Magic Resist at some point in time. And that kind of gives me the idea that I'll grab uh, Spirit Passage and maybe pick myself up a um, life stealing item like Blade of the Ruin King. So that way I can be a little bit tanky towards a lot of the AP on their team while also giving myself some more of that AD units that we need. But we're going to go ahead and back up real quick because we're about to gauge right here. So Janik gets completely taken out of this fight by taking a Nidalee Spear. I see that Vi is coming out. I turn around and snare, then stun Ash. Vi comes in and pops her down. I pop uh, Ignite on her, and then it's no problem at all for us to clean up. The barrier gets popped, but Ash can't get away. Um, I turn around and do a little bit of damage on to this Nidalee, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get her uh, just because I'm not ready to take tower shots, but we are going to go ahead and push this out. Diana shows up, though, and is going to make us want to leave this engagement for a little bit. Um, at this point, I do have a bit of gold. I'm sitting on about 900 gold, so I decided, you know what, let me go back. Let me buy, let me grab that page. Um, that way, I'll be a little bit more confident about tower diving and doing some more of these more aggressive gauges so like i said uh i have <laughs> no intention of actually winning our lane i just want to feed as little as possible while trying to grab as much cs as possible and when you're in a tough situation like this this is really the best thing you can do um is don't feed try to stay as relevant as you can and as uh close to being to your build as you can uh, and what i mean by that is you know just Try to stay as close as you can in CS. Uh, you know, if you're in bot lane on blue side, go take golems like I'm about to do right now. Yeah, I, I'm trying to get this jam to help me out with it, but yeah, go take golems. Um, if you're on red side, I mean, you can go take uh, white, but it's a little bit harder. 
and it does put you a little bit further out of lane. But of course, they went ahead and took that bot lane. I'm gonna go ahead and sit here and back. And actually, I decided to turn around and engage on Ash since Nidalee wasn't there. And between um, my snare, my stun, and my ultimate, we completely locked her down, and I was able to grab the kill. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the wave back out and get myself a little bit more. And hopefully, I'll be able to pick up a sheen pretty soon. And once I have that sheen, um, I'll be able to do a significantly increased amount of damage um, every time I lock someone down with a CC. So I'll take a good bit of poke. And uh, that's really the plan right now for me. So as being as that I'm now uh, 1 and -on 1 compared to the Ash, which is 0, 2, and 0, I'm actually ahead of her. Even though she has twice my CS, um, that kill and that assist is going to actually put me ahead of her as far as gold. So, actually, yeah, she's a little bit ahead of me, but... Um, I'm relevant. I'm still relevant to the game. I still have the ability to make plays now, and because of that, we might actually be able to pull off this lane. So, I'm going to try to go in here, just scare them off. We don't want them to be pushing mid too hard. And uh, since we've already lost bot, why not come try to help out another lane? And since they're showing a lot of presence in mid, it's not a bad idea to come over here and try to do a little lane bullying. Again, I'm not trying to take a lot of damage, and um, seeing as how much damage I was taking, instead of grabbing Sheen, I went up and started building myself the components I need for Ninja Tabbies, and I grabbed myself an Amp Tome for just a little bit of AP. But again, as you can see, it's really, really hard to get away from Leona. Even though I'm not building Tanky, I do have enough damage to make them uh, question trying to engage on me. So, uh, as I destroyed that Nibbly you saw earlier. So I'm going to try to hold this tower off and keep it there until Heimerdinger can get back. Because once Heimerdinger is back, he can pretty much hold this lane, even against two or three people. Heimerdinger is really, really good about that. And uh, I'm going to stay just a little while just in case I can pick up another kill. But if not, I'm going to go ahead and back in a minute and grab myself my Sheen. Because I really, really want to get that Sheen out. Once I have that Sheen, I'm going to be doing a significant amount of damage. I'm going to go ahead and pick up these Wolves. And then back and pick up more towards that Trinity Force. And there it goes. There goes the Sheen and the Ninja Tabbies. I have not upgraded my gold item, seeing as how right now I have no use for it. I'm not going to upgrade it anymore. In fact, I'm just going to kind of sit on it and hold it um, until I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to sell it off. But as it is right now, it's still giving me a little bit of extra health. And it still provides a little bit of extra gold to anyone who's around me. Um, it's not a lot of gold, but it's still enough to, uh, to make it worth not selling it right now. So as I back off, I go ahead and I pick up uh, some home guard for my ninja tabbies. That way I can run back into lane as quickly as I can whilst trying to still farm up. Because right now that's my biggest thing is I am uh, really, really far behind compared to my um, opposite side, which is Ash, who has 155 CS and I only have about 80. So I need to really catch up. But on the other hand, she also has no kills and I'm now 2-0-1. So as long as I can keep that up and keep racking up my kills without giving away any, um, I could uh, actually catch up and be able to be a real threat towards the uh, mid and late game. So as you can see, we're pretty much just warding around our jungle. We're trying to stay safe. We're really trying to get to that late game. And again, I jump down on top of this Ash with all my CC. She just she can't get away. Um, she pumps the arrow right into my face, but I'm pretty sure I can catch up to her. Janna goes in trying to grab her. She pops her back with her ultimate. I go in. There goes the stun. And then the shield and an auto attack is all that is needed to clean it up. Um, I would have probably turned around and take it, taken down this Nidalee. But seeing as how Diana showed up, I wanted to back off. But the minute Kha'Zix showed up, I was like, okay, that's enough first damage. That I'm pretty sure if I CC lock someone between me and Kha'Zix, we could kill them. So we're going to go ahead and probably siege up this tower a little bit. And Kha'Zix goes man mode in on uh, that Nidalee, forcing her out of lane. And we turn it around and pushed down on Diana, but we took a little bit too many tower shots, so we said, you know what, let's just back off. Um, I'm making my way towards mid, seeing as if I can hold it off a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and grab Braves first, but then I see that uh, <laughs> Janice being chased down by this Ash, I'm like, you know what, I can kill this Ash. So I go back in on this Ash. I missed my ultimate, unfortunately, but it's still okay. I was able to pick it up, and it was a one-for-one -one trade there. Still not bad, but now I am able to grab that Trinity Force, which is going to make me a significant threat in the later game. So I went ahead and grabbed another long sword, and as you can see now, I'm actually doing a good bit of damage, and I think I'm gonna be able to get this Lee Sin, if not, oh, Kha'Zix grabbed it. So, um, but it's really hard to get away from us. We got Bai, we got the Kha'Zix jump, and then we have my snare and CC. And then we have the burst damage from Kha'Zix, myself, and Heimerdinger. 
with his uh, ultimate and his rockets. And right now our main plan is just to kind of build a, a little tanky bruiser and try to give Kha'Zix as many stacks as he can so he can keep resetting that jump. If he can keep resetting that jump and just keep taking out all their squishy um, carries, we could really actually push and win this game. And as you can see, we are starting to make a significant difference as we take our first tower for the game. So again, I grabbed that long sword, and I'm going to probably take that long sword. I'm going to turn it into a... Uh, try to steal the dragon there. Was not able to. Is, we can watch it in a minute. Oops, slowing it down, not speeding it up. Um, I tried to go in here to steal the dragon with my ultimate, but unfortunately, between me and Kha'Zix, we weren't able to get it. The purple team did smite it just right. Um, but we are able to get a kill out of it, and possibly a second kill out of it. Nope, just the one kill. So, well, we failed Dragon, but I got one kill out of it, and um, again, not too bad. But going back to that Longsword, um, I'm going to be taking that, I'm going to be building that into a Cutlass, which I'll later on be building that into a Blade of the Rune King. But as for now, I just want to get the Cutlass so I can have a little bit of lifesteal, which will let me be able to do some dangerous stuff um, that I wasn't previously able to. And then after that, I'm going to start building Tanky, which right now my mindset uh, for tankiness. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed the Giant Belt first instead of the Cutlass. But um, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to get myself Sunfire Cape and that Spirit Passage. As you see, all I have to do is CC lock someone with that snare, jump in down on them, stun them. And the stun does a significant amount of damage, plus with the Trinity Force's Sheen ability, it does an increased amount of damage, which actually gives me a good bit of uh, damage. So down to 505, I am now about <laughs> double behind Ash as she has over 200, and I'm just barely hitting over 100. So I'm going to go ahead and back again. Um, don't know what I'm waiting for. There you go. Got that Cutlass finally. And now also with the Cutlass, I have that additional slow. So it's a little bit more CC. Not a hard CC, but more CC, which I can then use. I missed my snare there, unfortunately. But I was able to turn around and try to get this Lee Sin. And we are able to clean up on him. Again, it's really, really hard to get away from us. Especially since we have so much hard CC locking with uh, Vi, myself, and even to a certain extent with um, Janna with her tornado and her ultimate. So uh, positioning is very key, and as long as our position is good, we'll be doing well as well. Uh, Dragon is almost up. It's about a minute and a half out. So we'll probably try to get that, seeing as how we are a little bit behind. We're about 2k behind right now, even though we're heading kills. Um, but grabbing... The next few dragons would significantly increase our chances of uh, making a comeback and indeed be able to allow us to grab those items that we need for this late game, which that would be those tanky items. So, we see that they are trying to come around and get the top lane, but top lane is okay. They went ahead and got Lee Sin, which is going to make the other team regret trying to come in. I'm going to go ahead and turn around and try to get this white, but I'm trying to keep close attention to the minimap scene if I need to come around and do anything. Um, after I grab right, I'm going to go ahead and run top and see if I can't bait out a play and get Kha'Zix a kill here. So, just get someone to come in on me. And here comes the Diana. I turn around and snare her, stun her, and there comes the Kha'Zix, and boom. Uh, perfect bait. And of course, while that was happening, Kha'Zix got nidily again because the Vi and Janna were keeping her there, and the reset on the jump allowed him to get in. So at this point, we're doing pretty fantastic on 5-0 and 7. Our Kha'Zix is 9-3 and 2. And we just got top tower, and we're about to get our second tower in top lane. And we're going to continue to push it out and get our third tower. We're just going to go ahead and tank it up. And there we go. Uh, we were going to try to get this in here, but we decide that it's a little too risky. Everyone is back up. And they are pushing down on our mid and our bot tower, so we're just going to go ahead and turn around. But uh, Diana tries to stop us from backing. She does indeed stop us from backing, but at the cost of her own life. Um, so now, uh, Kha'Zix is really low. I'm pretty much just trying to play the block game, trying to make sure he doesn't get killed. Uh, Kali comes in and is trying to get him, and uh, I pretty much get caught out. I miss my flash. And is unable to get away, and especially since I do not have any of that magic resist yet that I really want. Akali is just able to tear through me. So, watching the guys here. Uh, looks like we have Baron warded up and getting ready. I'm back in the game now with my Sunfire Cape and that Negatron Cloak as I start building towards 
that spirit facade which I talked about earlier. Double ward in that uh, dragon pit. Uh, once I get that spirit facade, I'll be able to upgrade my cutlass into a blade of the rune king, and actually be able to make uh, significant progress in fights like that. I'm gonna go ahead and keep pushing bot out, just keeping the pressure there. Not going to actually take it myself because I don't want to get caught out and um, be lost. I really want to keep myself ready for team fights, which is really primarily where I'm doing the best right now is team fights using my uh, CCing abilities to lock up. Um, unfortunately, Heimerdinger gets slowed here by Ash, takes a few too many hits, and then arrow to the face and uh, just gets obliterated. After seeing that, we decide let's back off a little bit. We don't want to engage on this 3v5. Um, that's all we assume that it is is a 3v5. But we know that they're doing Baron, and uh, we want to go counter it. I'm just going to run up and ult, and I took it. I didn't even know I took it. Um, about this point in time, everyone's like, holy shit, you took Baron. I uh, knew I took Baron. I was like, oh, crap, that's amazing. So uh, it just goes to show, you know, being a little brave sometimes, uh, using that ult properly. I was really just trying to plan to stun everyone and try to get in there. But now that we do have Baron, I'm a lot more braver, and I'm going to go in and try to take out this Akali. I did grab the Nidalee, and eventually I did get the Akali, but unfortunately Heimendigger had to go down as well. And Heimendigger did get the kill. I thought I got the kill, but Heimendigger did. But all in all, still good. Akali's out for another 45 seconds, which will give us a good time for pushing. And I do believe we are going to just go ahead and take this tower for free. Um, after that, like I said again, once Dragon came back up, we were going to go ahead and contest it and try to get it. Uh, just checking to make sure no one's around. Um, they try to come in and try to stop us, but just the threat of me coming around the corner is enough to make them one stop. I'm trying to stay where I can ult without being really in the fight, but unfortunately, <coughs> I was out of position, wasn't able to do anything there. But let's go ahead and watch this fight coming up. And um, they did get Dragon, but as you can see here, Kazu is going to wait in. He jumps in onto them. The Heimerdinger stuns, I pop my ult, and just as my ult pops off, Janna pops her ult and actually pushes them all out of the way, which uh, really sucked for us, but we are still able to turn this around. Constance grabs a double kill, um, make, we force the Akali to pop her Zonias, and I do pick up a kill on the Diana. And I barely have a scratch on me, as you can see, because one of two things, I'm doing a lot of damage, and second, I'm also very, very tanky, so I'm not being focused as much as our um, softer carries like... Jana Kha'Zix and uh, Heimendinger. So I do have this a little deception of they're like, oh, he's tanky, he's doing all that. But I also have a lot of damage with that tankiness. Thus the Boozer name. So we went ahead and pushed both top and mid. And seeing as how we have both those inhibitors down, we we're going to go ahead and back. We grabbed their red buff. And now I have my Spirit Fissage and my Blade of the Ruin King. So I practically have a full build. Um, I did sell that gold item just so I can get these items out a little bit faster and to clear myself some space up in my um, item slots. But uh, now we're just continue to push down this bot lane since it's the only tower in the hip left. And as long as we are safe and we push it correctly and we don't let ourselves get caught out. Since Ash is the only one down here, we're just going to go ahead and just take the tower as quickly as we can. And then we're going to follow that up with an inhib. Um, if Ash gets in range, I'm trying to grab her with my snare, but I keep missing. And as you can see, Ash actually does do a significant amount of damage with me. I'm not surprised that she has almost 400 creep kills and a full build, a lot of armor penetration. But with our tankiness, with our burst damage, I'm pretty sure we can just go ahead and straight up kill them. Um, it's now me in a 1v4, so I don't want anything to do with this. I'm going to go ahead and run. I'm doing everything I can to not get killed by Akali. And I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to make it out or not. And I do. Amazing. Um, a lot of people don't remember this or actually know this, but if you do pop Blade of the Rune King, not also does it sap health and give you a little health back, but it also slows people down. It still has that Cutlass ability attached to it. So that is exactly the only thing that saved me. Me and I are going to go ahead and beat down this Baron. And um, between our lifesteal and both of our shields, um, we're pretty much not going to take any damage from this. We're, we're going to walk out with a... Sweet, lovely little Baron with um, essentially no damage done to us. So, and now for the big push down mid, we have Kazus um, coming to join us in a minute. And we're just going to siege it straight down the mid. Uh, their top and mid inhib came back up, so we're going to go ahead and try to take one of those out. As long as we keep this pressure going, um, we, will, we will win. I mean, at this point, the only way we can lose is to throw it. 
Um, and that's why we're playing it so cautiously. Janna got a little low. We said, all right, let's back off a little bit. Let's grab their buffs. Let's push the lanes back out. And uh, let's grab these in hits. So, as you can see, I went ahead and engaged on this Lee Sin. Um, didn't really do anything, but I did pop his Banshee's Veil and did force him to use his ultimate on me. Uh, so those two things will be down for a little bit of time, which will give us uh, just what we need to go ahead and start taking out these inhibs and uh, pushing out into their base. So at this point, all we need to do is find one of these squishy targets. We're really trying to get onto that Ash because she does do a significant amount of damage. If either myself, Vi, or Kha'Zix jump in on that Ash, that will be it for them if we kill her. And um, at this point, that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to use uh, Vi's ult and my ult to just completely lock down this Ash. And once that happens, um, we will be able to take this game. Um, I tried to snare the Ash, wasn't able to pick her up. But I do turn around and we pop the Akali. Uh, Janet almost goes down, but as you can see, we turn it around. And there goes the Ash to Kha'Zix. Um, I go ahead and snare in on the... Nidalee and take a few of the towers. I'm just going to take it for a little bit longer until minions show up. Then we're going to turn this around and grab both in, both Nexus towers and turn around and grab Nexus. And that will be GG, everyone. And this, of course, was my ADC um, not entirely planned at all Leona build. Um, it's more of a bruiser than an AD carry. But if you do have a good game, if you are lucky, if you are able to get these items out in time, it is a really, really strong build. I do suggest doing it with some fun, maybe with four other friends who you can build a comp around this. Um, again, the fact that we had Vi and Kha'Zix on this team really, really helped out because it was just a lot more CC locking between me and Vi, and then the Kha'Zix had all the burst damage. Thank you guys very much, and I hope to see you all again next time.